Do you know what a 4.3 liter L99 from the junkyard really needs? A new cam! In this video, we're going to take a look at three different cam shops on our 4.3 liter L99, you know, the baby LT1. That's right, GM made a 4.3 liter V8. In fact, they made a number of them. They made a 262, 265, 267, and this 4.3 liter. This one featured a 3.743 inch bore and a three inch stroke, giving us the metric displacement of 4.3 liters, which is much smaller than its big brother, the LT1, which displaces 5.7 liters, but just because this motor is smaller doesn't mean that it doesn't respond to performance upgrades. In this case, we're going to take a look at camshafts. We ran it with a stock cam and then a pair of TPIS cams, both of them mild. In fact, they weren't dramatically different. They only varied by about 40 thousandths lift and about 10 degrees of duration, but there was a big change in lobes separation angle, and I think that that's what we're going to point to when we take a look at the dramatic difference in the power curves. So let's start swapping cams and make some power. Here the springs are going to install, place the factory ones. Let's check it out. See that? Because the dampener interferes with the guide, we're going to take the dampener out of the spring. So we're just going to use the spring by itself without the dampener. Should work fine. Now it's time to put the new springs on. We're going to use the stock keeper and the stock retainer. Let's put those in place. For the record, this is how a camshaft should come. Then screws, that's awesome. Cam card, 207-214 at 50, 410-427 lift, and a 117 LSA with a 1.5 rocker. I love these little plastic deals, that's awesome.
4.3 liter L99. And I was taking a look at the factory rockers. I thought, you know what? I want to try an aftermarket roller rocker. And the ideal situation is to get an aftermarket roller rocker that's a 1-6 ratio so we could step up in cam lift, basically. But the problem is that these factory rockers, there's no guide plate and there's nothing else locating it. So they have a guided rocker. So they got a little edge on both sides. You can kind of see that. Yeah, try to get up close there. It's guided so that it holds the rocker on the valve tip. It stops it from moving back and forth. It keeps the push rod in place. Lucky for me, <laughs> the guys at West Tech have a set of roller rockers first off, so awesome on the roller rocker. It's also a 1-6 roller rocker, again, awesome on the roller rocker, and it has a guided tip to locate this thing. So I'm gonna put a set of these 1-6 guided roller rockers on. We'll find out if it's gonna add any power. Let's go. So I adjusted all these. We give them about a half turn or preload. You can see I kind of went in order there. The other thing I have to do now is we're going to have to trim the valve cover, the factory valve cover, to work with these roller rockers. The, the supports that are in the valve cover interfere with that. But all I got to do is slice a little section off. It should go right on. We all, I already know that it fits over the top of these poly locks, which is very important because those are a lot higher. But it should go right on after we trim it. So we got to trim the valve cover. We're going to trim these supports right here. Those are hitting on the rockers. Let's buzz this thing up. the horsepower and torque curves of our 4.3 liter L99. It was run with the GM Performance Parts dual plane intake, a 650 Holly, and inch and three quarter long tube headers with the MSC distributor. This was with the stock cam. The combination produced 243.5 horsepower and 280.9 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened after we installed the first of our two camshafts. This was from TPIS. Take a look at our camshaft. The TPIS cam was a 433-450 lift split, 197-206 degree duration split, and 109.5 degree lobe separation angle. You can see fairly mild cam, even smaller probably than a factory LT1 cam. But with this cam, the power output uh, improved up to 257.6 horsepower. Peak torque was up a little bit to 285.8. As you can see, with this small, mild cam, basically the power output improved everywhere. But after running this camshaft, I took a look at the stock rockers and thought, you know what, we should be able to put roller rockers on this thing. And not only did I find roller rockers, but I found the set from Comp Cams from the guys at West Tech, awesome guys at West Tech, 1.6 ratio, and they even had the guided tip, which was necessary on this L99 application. And here's what happened when we installed our 1.6 ratio roller rockers with the small TPIS cam. Another good size gain. Power picked up to 267 horsepower, and peak torque was up as well, which was nice. 290.8 foot-pounds of torque. So if you take a look at where we started with our stock camshaft, we jumped up with the TPIS cam and then jumped up again with the rockers, which shows us that this combination probably would <laughs> benefit from having additional lift. But now let's take a look at see what happened when we installed a slightly bigger cam and we'll start off with a new group. This is the horsepower and torque curve of our finished combination. And by that, I mean we had run our 4.3 liter L99 
first with a stock cam, and then we installed the small TPIS cam, and then finished off with a set of 1.6 ratio comp aluminum roller rockers with the guided tips on them. So with the rockers on the cams, the power output was 267 horsepower and 290.8 foot-pounds of torque. And the reason I didn't have the other runs up here is because we installed a slightly larger cam from TPIS. It had a much wider lobe separation angle. So this, these are the results of the bigger cam. I'll go ahead and show you the specs. The second cam was a 410, 427 lift, so slightly less lift, but more duration, a 207, 214 degree duration split, and a wider, much wider 117 degree lobe separation angle. And as you can see, it did make more power, which we would kind of expect both from the increased duration and possibly from the increased lobe separation angle. But it also lost a lot of power down low. I mean, from you know, 47 or 4,800 RPM on down and way down here in the 2,500 RPM range and the, the low RPM stuff, it lost a lot of torque. So it obviously wouldn't be a, an ideal cam choice for this small 4.3 liter, certainly not this carbureted one. That may be different on the fuel injected version once we get the factory short runner intake manifold on there. Although I tend to think that this loss in low speed power would continue even with a different intake manifold. So it just goes to show you, the right camshaft, <laughs> sometimes picking the right one is a little harder than you think. Let's get to our conclusion. So what do we find out from swapping all the cams on our 4.3 liter L99, you know, the baby LT1? What do we find out? Well, sometimes it's just as important to find out what doesn't work as what does work. When we find out what doesn't work, it steers us in the right direction. And this is a perfect example. I think we found out that this combination, certainly with this intake and carburetor on it, does not like the wide load separation angle. I mean, it lost a ton of low speed power with the other cam. Even though I think it liked more duration and judging by the rocker test, it also likes more lift. So more duration good, more lift good, wide load separation angle, not so much. I think if we put a cam together that has more lift, maybe in the low 500 range, more duration somewhere in the 212, 218, maybe even as high as 224 if we will, if we really want to rev this thing. But I think we should keep the lobe separation angle nice and tight. And I know it's going to hurt us for pissing the valve clearance, but I think we have a long way to go yet with this factory setup. Let me know what you guys think. What camshaft would you pick? What should I test? I'm definitely going to try ported heads. We're definitely going to try the other intakes. we got a lot of stuff going on. And obviously, like every motor, this one has to get boost. But right now, I'm headed over to the mill to mill off the back section where the EGR port is on the factory intake manifold so I can stick that distributor in. Maybe I'll have a video coming up on that test. Okay, guys, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, and also make sure watch the live videos because the guys that watch the live feed, you know, they get a little preview, you know, a little taste of what's coming up in the big video. Thanks for watching, guys.